everybody and welcome back again to Mass Effect 2. We're still on Omega and I have already been doing some shopping uh, off camera. And yeah, while running around here I noticed this guy over there, Ish. So Is maybe maybe you want Shepard? to talk to him. Shepard's supposed to be dead. Well, you're wrong. I'm alive. Greetings. I was hoping you'd come by. I'm Ish, and this is Cell. You look like a good person to know. <laughs> um, uh, nice to see someone pleasant, I guess. Friendly faces seem hard to come by around here. Reasonable people are more valuable than air in a place like this. Um, but how do you know me anyway? I can see you're trying to flatter me. Don't. <laughs> of, of course. Forgive me. You just made me nervous, is all. So, can I help you in any way? You need something? Well, if you'd be so kind, I hoped you might consider a proposition. <laughs> I need skilled, trustworthy people to take care of a little business for me. Nothing illegal, of course. <laughs> but it's paying work. Um, alright, tell me about yourself. What kind of business do you do? Important business. <laughs> so important that, with your help, we can change Omega. Uh, and what exactly do you need from me? I'm listening. I'm in the information business. Specifically, the buying and selling of privileged materials. It's nothing illicit. I just need someone to pick up packages in certain locations and bring them to me here. Uh, that sounds kind of shady-ish. <laughs> See what I did there. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm far too amused by my own lame joke here. Yeah, I, I need more information about this. What's your angle? No angle. I'm a simple businessman. What do you say? Um, Uh, I don't know, I don't know, but um, usually, you know, um, on the first place, I like to do all the quests unless they're like really, really um, um, off the grid. <laughs> but um, yeah, I guess I'm going to take this one just, you know, for, for completion's sake. I can do that. My contacts use specific drop points. I need you to look outside Merib's shop on the Citadel and inside Eternity on Ilium. Look around for anything that might hold a data package and bring those packages <laughs> to me. Good luck, my friends. All right, all right. So um, I need to pick up some packages. Well, we did a very similar thing in the last game, I believe. Um, on what was the name? Novaria. I think it was a Novaria. On, anyway, um, uh, Aria had had a, a job for us as well. So I guess we're going to do this before we leave this place. Um, I have to see where I'm supposed to go for that. The Patriarch. In one of the side rooms downstairs at Afterlife and tell him he needs to hide. Okay. Alright, let's let's do this. Um so it's downstairs. Just one more. Probably means down here? All right. Two years after a Geth attack nearly destroyed it, the colony of Zoo's Hope has announced plans for an expansion. Hmm. Well, Merc that is Life nice to hear. Down, ready to give it all up and go into hiding in the um. Don't. Where exactly is this place? I got a mate and a ship. I only brought one of them with me to Omega. <laughs> Finally, they have a new bartender now. They have replaced the shady vegetarian. Welcome to Afterlife. How may I serve you? Um, I guess we're, we're not going to drink anything at the moment. I'm good for now. Of course. Thank you for... I need, I need like to find anyway. that room with a patriarch. Oh, and I accidentally clicked on dance. <laughs> well, let's have a little dance. All right, <laughs> and, and continue. I've had better drinks in the back of a garbage scow. <laughs> um, where I talk to fist. Oh, here's a room. Ah, yes, this is the place where we need to go. Okay, Don't let's, let's act talk to like him. you know. Just plan for the funeral normally. During the service, someone will want to set up a meeting. He's in on it with whoever killed your family. 
You tear off a few of his fingers, you'll find <laughs> out who did this to him. Okay. No. You said he had close family. They'll just want revenge. Kill the family first. Then he'll get angry and come at you stupid. <laughs> and then you kill him. I don't think I know you, human. I'm the patriarch. Arius patriarch. What do you want? Um, <laughs> tell me about Aria. What do you know about Aria? Uh, a few centuries ago, Omega was my rock. When Aria arrived, she had nothing but the clothes mm -hmm. on her back. I thought she was another dancer. <laughs> she killed half my men and convinced the rest that she could run this place better than I did. She came for me here in this bar. We tore this place apart. She crushed one of my hearts, <laughs> shattered half the bones of my body, and left me alive. So she quite literally broke your heart, eh? All right, why did she leave you alive? What made her decide to leave you alive? No, she doesn't destroy what she can use. She said I could have all my old comforts. I served as her advisor. Mm. I knew how things worked. I knew who to lean on, who to smack down, who to smile at. And everyone who respected me saw me beaten, broken. They knew that as strong as I'd been, huh. she was stronger. I see. And why are you called Patriarch? Why do they call you Patriarch? It's like an Asari matriarch, only male. <laughs> it was Arya's little joke. After she took me down, she let me live. Kept me around as an advisor oh. and a trophy. So, you got any enemies? <laughs> well, it's kind of an obvious question, but let's ask it anyway. Rumor has it some people want you dead. Know anything about that? Well, I can think of a few. I know things. Old secrets, old grudges few floors you can dig up to find bodies mm -hmm. underneath. Someone who wanted to weaken Arya might come after me. They do it to get to her, you see. Not for me. I don't matter enough anymore to have enemies mm -hmm. of my own. <laughs> Tell me some war stories. A Krogan as old as you must have some great stories. <laughs> I killed a lot of people, lived well. And was beaten by a small Asari who keeps me around as an example. My time is done. Anyone I killed is long forgotten. The stories are Arya's now. That is actually kind of depressing. All right, yeah, you you have to get out of here. Some people want you dead. I've been asked to move you to safety. Well, of course, Arya wouldn't want me hurt. Mm -hmm. It would make her look bad. Perhaps Arya's reputation is no longer my concern. Perhaps I will stay and see who thinks me important enough to kill. What kind of Krogan are you? Um... I don't know. I don't know. But you are, you are kinda... kinda, I don't know, um... defeatist for Krogan? You allow Arya to protect you like you're her pet? I thought you were a Krogan. Arya let me live. She gave me a position of honor as her advisor. <laughs> she gave you a position of comfort as her trophy. Is that what you want? <laughs> or would you rather go down fighting? I wished she'd killed me the day she beat me. That would have been a glorious death. But perhaps it is not too late to die well. <laughs> Perhaps these assassins will remember my name. Farewell, human. <laughs> Thank you. Well, this wasn't what I wanted at all, but <laughs> maybe maybe it's actually for the best, so at least he can can have a good death here, right? <laughs> Uh, anyway, let's let's go and uh, talk to um, the guy again and 
Let's see what he has to say about our um, slightly unconventional solution to this. <laughs> Alright, um, I think it was this guy over here. Arya wants to speak with you, human. Something about Patriarch taking on a squad mm. of mercs by himself. I right. Keep her waiting. Right, I may have something to do with that. Okay, Arya. <laughs> I heard my old friend Patriarch died. Mm -hmm. Went out in a blaze of glory. You wouldn't know anything about that, would you? Yeah, he, he didn't really live like a Krogan. I couldn't stand by and watch you coddle him like a pet. He was better than that. He was. No one has challenged me the way he did centuries ago. <laughs> Perhaps it is better this way. You've done a lot for me, Shepard. Let me return the favor. We're sending your coordinates to a cache on an uncharted world. You want it? It's yours. Um, just like that? What's the catch? No catch, I don't need it and I don't want it to go to waste. Whatever you find is yours to deal with. <laughs> alright, alright. Um, yeah, tell me more about you and the Patriarch. Sounds like you and Patriarch have a history. Our history is Omega's history. Long, bloody, and always mm -hmm. ending in my favor. The details are complicated. I get it. When I arrived, Omega was lawless, a land of opportunity. I built alliances and destroyed the fools who wouldn't get in line, which was most of them. <laughs> but Patriarch it was something different. A powerful friend. So you weren't enemies at first? I'm surprised you were ever anything but rivals. We were allies for a hundred years. I suppose he decided that was long enough. It wasn't a surprise when he turned. He controlled the muscle. My people contributed more subtle action. Espionage, politics, assassination. Fortunately for me, his men had become accustomed to certain benefits of working with Asari. What do you mean by that? Superior intel? Assassination? That's cute. No, I took advantage of certain skills mm -hmm. my people try to downplay. Patriarch's men abandoned him in droves. In the end, we fought face to face on this very spot. The toughest fight of my life. But of course, I won. Huh. Um, didn't I already ask this? But let's ask it again. Patriarch doesn't sound like something an Asari would come up with. I found it humorous. He wanted power. And we pretended he had it with a word that doesn't exist for my people. Mm. I eventually found a certain respect for the title. All right. And the man. And why keep him alive so long? So you kept him around as a trophy? I did. A trophy and an example. Whenever someone thought about taking me on, I pointed them to Patriarch. I suppose I still can. <laughs> Well, not really because um, he's dead, but uh, I guess you can. I guess he still serves as an example, I suppose. Anyway, I've heard enough. Interesting. Well, let's move on. <laughs> Do you need something else? Um, I don't think so. Area before Omega. Um, I may not have asked this before. Let's try this. Are we friendly enough to talk about who you were oh. before Omega? You're reaching back centuries, Shepard long before anything that should matter to you. Hmm. So why keep it secret? No reason, from your perspective. But there are plenty of people out there with long memories. I've had a few careers, a few names. Commando training, mercenary leanings. I've kept what was valuable and dropped the baggage. Um, old enemies means old friends. You're important, but also isolated. No other allies out there to back you up? I lean toward a particular type of work. It tends to encourage professional rivalry. Hmm. Sometimes you'd rather disappear than be forced to kill someone. Are you afraid to talk about this? I thought you were in charge. Why so scared of your past? I have nothing to fear on Omega. That doesn't mean I want to broadcast my past to the galaxy. You'd be surprised how long some entities can hold a grudge. 
This little exercise with Patriarch? Hmm. A footnote. Not even the first Krogan I've pissed off. <laughs> okay. Um, so you must have a lot of resources. You couldn't have started here with nothing. You must have been someone important. I've always been important, even if others didn't recognize hmm. it. So yes, I had money to start this operation. I also had creditors who thought they were more entitled to it. I let them chase a ghost. Hmm. Or several. It's relatively easy to outlive a Solarian, <laughs> but not their record keeping. I see, I see. Um, okay, enough for now. Alright, I'll drop it. Better luck next time. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure I asked the other two things already, so let's just uh, leave. Maybe I'll come back later. Maybe I'll be here. Okay, well, that was an interesting chat, and I actually got huh, Eclipse Smuggling Depot. An Eclipse Smuggling Depot has been detected on planet Darata, far east of Hourglass Nebula. Cerberus would pay very good money for any cargo recovered from the site. Um, well, you know, since I don't really have anything better to do, why not just uh, finish this right away? It's already like half an episode and maybe a bit too late to start another main mission so um yeah let me head back to the normandy and then we will try to recover this uh smugglers depot all right i am back on the ship so let's see if we can't um recover the stuff that um aria told us about um Okay, we need to go to a Mars Relay, and then we have to go to the Hourglass Nebula, which is uh, kind of hard to see, because it's behind those uh, other pop-up windows. <laughs> Alright, I, I got it. Um, actually, I, I still haven't scanned these planets over here, but um, I'm, I'm going to do that another time. Let's just head to the fire system and... Um, Cover that cargo. There we go. All right. Um, let's let's have a look at the planets. Nephrus, restless sleep, is a relatively small hydrogen nitrogen gas giant. Its atmosphere is home to spectacular winds of up to 350 km per hour and electrical storms up to 700 times the power of those on Earth, which indicate that its hydrogen clouds contain moderate amounts of water vapor. Alright. Um, yeah, I'm going to do the actual mineral scanning another time. Why does it react to that? That's kind of strange. <laughs> Quarem, a scorchingly hot planet close to its pa parent star, Quarem was bombarded by comets and asteroids during its earliest geological periods. As the solar system stabilized, these occurrences leveled off until the planet became geologically inactive. Its nitrogen and helium atmosphere is extremely thick due to the heavy metals making the planet's core very dense. Unfortunately, these metals are deep below the crust, making mining impractical. Alright, um, let's check out the next planet. Alingon. Alingon, deceptive, is so named by Solarian scouts because as their probes landed on the planet, their instruments started going awry. This turned out to be due to the high concentration of magnetically active periclase magnesia in the core and crust of the planet. This interferes with scans and broadcasts, which has given rise to countless spaces stories of pirates lying in wait in Alingon's magnetosphere, or crashed, ship, crashed ships with untold fortune stranded on the surface. In reality, any pirates would have a hard time locating prey amongst all the interference and would live lives cut off from the rest of the galaxy, as the magnetosphere kills ex extraplanetary extra communication. 
elegant other natural features are a thin atmosphere of carbon dioxide, spectacular dry ice formations and xenon gas which can be skimmed from the upper atmosphere and used in ion thrusters. Alright. Well here we have a bunch of rich planets here so I may actually do some research scanning after this episode. Antictra. Antictra, fused metal, is so named because of its spectacular craters. A planet high in various grades of iron oxide, Antictra is regularly pummeled by loose asteroids in the nearby belt between it and Venrum. The iron melted and fused by the incoming meteors make for spectacular landscape shots that look alien no matter what part of the galaxy you may be from. However, due to frequent meteor impacts, exploration is considered highly dangerous even to those with advanced kinetic barriers. Yep, and another rich planet. I definitely need to do some scanning in this in this region. Tunfigel, first charted by the Solarians, Tunfigel Hard Heart <laughs> is noted for its platinum and uranium deposits, making robo mining a lucrative activity. While the surface temperature is well within the range of a comfortable EVA excursion, the extremely dense Tunfigel generates a dangerous gravitational pull five times that of Earth. The Solarian miners exploiting the planet to derisively nicknamed planets such as these Alcaturus traps. <laughs> okay. Uh, I see. Um, oh wait, that was um, one step too much. And is there any other? Is there another plant over here? Venrum. Venrum, White Knight, takes its name from a Solarian story in the Romantic period of a knight who refused all temptation to riches, carnality, and even fa flavorful food <laughs> until justice was served to the poor and oppressed. The planet is so named because of its white, highly reflective surface, composed mainly of titanium dioxide and ice, and no atmosphere to speak of. To dim its albedo. <laughs> That's an interesting, interesting story. Okay, but now let's uh, check out the planet we came here to um, explore. Darata, Cerberus hotspot detected. The planet Darata in the fire system is a suspected eclipse smuggling site. Cerberus is interested in obtaining the materials kept at this site. Operatives will be paid handsomely for any intact crates retrieved from the site. Be aware that Eclipse would rather see the cargo destroyed than lose it to a rival organization. Payment will be made once the acquisition of undamaged crates is verified. Alright. Um, oh, this actually is element zero. Well, let's Probe away. grab some of this over here. In research projects, element zero is used for bioamp and only mm. tool upgrades which allow squad members who have biotic and tech powers to be much more effective. Okay, but um, I'm, I'm going to do the scanning later. So yeah, let's, let's land on this planet. Um, yeah, I don't know. Let's bring... Garrus, maybe, and Zaid. Sure, let's let's do this. Um, right, you can level up. Let's give you those. The rest is fine. So let's do this. Alright, alright, here we go. Um, let me equip my, my hotbar. Overload on two. We have an inferno grenade. And I have, <laughs> I have three concussive shots. Yeah, this is not the best balanced team, I, I reckon. Um, there we go. Also, I guess we can get some ammo power going. You as well. All right, all right. Um, let's let's move out. 
20, 20 crates. Oh, I see. Um, I need to... I need to destroy them before they destroy the crates. And I need, probably need to be careful that I don't destroy the crates myself, right? Alright, uh, yeah, sure, let's... Let's do this. Um... There we go. This this guy has, has some 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 heavy stuff to throw at us. Firing a high impact shot. Whoa, 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 whoa. I need to be careful with this guy over here. Okay. That guy is dead. But I see more of them. Um all right, now it's your turn. Jeez! I'm not, not really good at this, I'm afraid. Let me reload. And let's give you an overload and... Okay, you are done. I need to regen some health. Um... Are there more? Yes, there is. There's another one over here. Okay, let me find some cover. And now we'll deal with you. Ooh, uh... Um... One grenade? There we go. Um, and I'm going to have to use a different weapon soon anyway. Uh. All right. And that's all of them. Huh. Oh, okay. Apparently, that's all of them. Well, I managed to save half of them. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is a good thing or not. Huh. But this this wasn't this wasn't so easy. Anyway, let me let me have a look around. If, if there's anything else to pick up, there is. Had to perform another full maintenance check. Sand keeps getting into our equipment, increasing the frequency of system checks. We have to be ready to shut this place down if someone spots us from orbit. <laughs> Alright. Mm. Alright, there's some, some stuff over here. Enemy ship spotted in orbit. IFF ID confirmed. Cerberus. Beginning farewell protocol. Engaging secure systems. Destroy command received. Initiating cleanup routine. Routine initiated. Activating mech security. Mech security activated. Locking access to terminal locked. Farewell prot protocol complete. So they saw us coming and they just abandoned, abandoned ship, apparently. Alright, alright, I see. Um... Yeah, but that seems to be about it. I I got I got a few crates at least. So I guess I'm I'm going to go back to the ship. <laughs> okay, um I gained a bit of experience, I got some credits. And some elements here. Well, better than nothing. But yeah, this was actually pretty quick. So... I don't know, maybe maybe I just see if I can talk to anyone else before I end the episode and then we'll call it a day. Um, let's see. Oh! Talk to Jack on the sub-level beneath the Normandy engineering deck. Hmm. Yeah, sure, maybe I actually want to do that. That's a good idea. That's a very good idea. All right, Commander, um, you received a new message at your private terminal. And I got a new message, so let's read this as well. Nice work on Darata from Cerberus Command. Nice work. We knew Eclipse was hiding valuable cargo on Darata, but we couldn't land without fear of their mercs destroying the crates. We've wired 
Uh, the credit's into your account. Damn glad to have you with us, Shepard. Alright. About Horizon, Shepard. I'm sorry for what I said back on Horizon. I spent two years pulling myself back together after you went down with the Normandy. Oh, it's from Caden. Okay, I see. It took me a long time to get over my guilt for surviving and move on. I'd finally let my friends talk me into going out for some drinks with a doctor on the Citadel. Nothing serious, but trying to let myself have a life again, you know? Then I saw you and everything pulled hard to port. You were standing in front of me, but you were with Cerberus. I guess I really don't know who either of is and is either of us is anymore. Do you even remember that night before Eilus? That night meant everything to me. Maybe it meant as much to you, but a lot has changed and in the last two years and I can't just put that aside. But please be careful. I've watched too many people close to me die. On Eden Prime, on Vormai, on Horizon, on the Normandy. I couldn't bear it if I lost you again. If you're still the woman I remember, I know you'll find a way to stop these collector attacks. But Cerberus is too dangerous to be trusted. Watch yourself. When things have settled down a bit, a little, maybe, I don't know, just take care. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, that, that uh, reunion on Horizon didn't really work out that way we um, would have wanted. But I, I sure hope, Shepard, that this time you're actually going to reply to him, because, I mean, um, I think that that's the least you can do. That's the least you can do. All right, um, but it's, it's nice that he, you know, um, messages back to us about that. So let's go to engineering and talk to Jack and see what she wants. I got thoughts, like little bugs crawling in and out of my head. <laughs> I can't stop them. You know I have a history with Cerberus. You know how far back it goes? No, nope, but I'm listening. I'll listen to anything you have to say, Jack. Your pal, the elusive man? <laughs> Never seen him before, but Cerberus raised me. First thing I remember is my cell door in a Cerberus base. They did experiments, drugged me, tortured me. Whatever chance I had to be normal, they stole it by trying to turn me into some superbiotic. Hmm. The doctors. The other kids. Every one of them hated me. They let me suffer. Alright, um, what was her justification for the torture? I mean, not that Cerberus ever needed a justification uh, there, you know. Um, I think the justification was always they do it to improve humanity or whatever, and I think that's all the justification they ever needed for whatever they did. What did they hope to gain by torturing a little girl? It was something about pain breaking down mental barriers and how it might clear the way for a more biotic power. I'm sure there was a payoff due at some point, but I wasn't going to see it. I was wired up in a cell. Hmm. So, <laughs> there were no reasons for the experiments. They tortured you just to see if they could make a strong biotic? That's it? Wasn't in a position to ask, Shepard. Mm. All I know is... A little girl crying in a cell, begging for the pain to stop. You enjoy what you became. I don't know if I really want to make that sort of judgment. That sounds, uh, I don't know, not appropriate. So how did you escape? How did you get out of there? There was some kind of emergency and I made a break for it. The other kids came out of their cells and attacked me. So did the guards. I just killed everything in my way and ran. Guess my biotics had developed faster than they thought. I managed to get a shuttle off the oh. ground. Drifted until a freighter picked me up. The crew used me, then sold me. <laughs> That's my uplifting escape story. Okay, um, and there were other kids? There were other children in the base? I didn't know much about them. I was kept separate. They hated me just like everyone else there. <laughs> when I broke out, I had to fight through them all. I showed them, but there's a loose end I need to deal <laughs> with. I see, I see. Well, it's it's good to have a reminder of how messed up Cerberus actually is. I mean, seriously, torturing little girls. You sure it was Cerberus? Well, um, I'm I'm pretty. I, I guess she is. You're absolutely certain that Cerberus was running the facility. I was a kid, but I wasn't dumb. I know how to listen. It was Cerberus. Don't care how far oh. down the chain it was. They thought they were so clever. Turns out. Mess with someone's head enough, and you can turn a scared kid into an all-powerful bitch. Fucking idiots. Well, I will confront them about it. I'm going to talk to the elusive man, and he'd better have some answers. 
He'll just deny everything. That's not what I'm after oh. anyway. I found the coordinates in your files. I want to go to the Telton facility on Pragia where they tortured and drugged me. I want to go to the center of the place, my cell. I want to deploy a big fucking bomb and I want to watch from orbit when it goes. <laughs> so you want to destroy the base? Attacking our allies is going to derail our mission. Not a smart move. The files say it was shut down after my escape. It's been abandoned for years. They going to care if I blow up a garbage dump? And why do you want to do this now? You've lived with this your whole life. Why do this now? Like I said, I found the coordinates in your files. You can't expect me to just hmm. sit on information like that. Um, yeah, sure. If you want to blow up an empty base and it makes you feel better, then I'm, I'm, I'm going to help you with that. <laughs> I'll set a course for Pragia. I owe you, Shepard. All right, so I s guess we got a mission from her as well. Yep, very nice. Um, I may actually want to do, I don't know, at least one of those uh, companion missions, and then we will continue picking up the other uh, companions that are still I waiting that for Rupert us. Rupert is actually cooking some good meals lately. <laughs> yeah, right. That scunner couldn't serve a good haggis if his life depended on it. But all haggis <laughs> tastes like ass anyway. Aye, but in the right hands, it can taste like mighty <laughs> fine ass. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure you know what you're talking about. Anyway, yeah, I guess I'm going to end the episode here. And in the next episode, I will, I will look at my companion missions, and we may actually want to do one of them. So yeah, thank you for watching, and see you again next time.